The world has been divided into several parts. Middle Earth is inhabited by dragons, humans, and many other races, a demonic world where demons and monsters live, and the spirit world, where the dead dwell. The main character was a resident of the spirit world. The spirit world is a place where souls stay for a while after death. Although there was no such thing as an inhabitant in this place, Miss had invented it herself, and she had no intention of reincarnating. The mistress was the first sacrifice in human history when civilization was in its infancy. It's still hard to tell who she was dedicated to. Some said to the sky, but the gods did not accept the sacrifice, and dragons had no contact with humans at that time. Maybe the lady's death didn't make any sense. So my lady decided not to be reborn to reincarnate as a human, but it worked out. The experiment was a success. The lady had pressure in her chest. Her body was very heavy. Wait, the girl had a body? What's that supposed to mean? The man asked if something was bothering the doll. People didn't understand why she was silent. Was it a failure again? It had taken a huge amount of money, but the mistress finally spoke. It was a success. Miss had become a powerful doll that would not die. The body was created by the workers of the Tower of Mages, who gave their whole life to this work. However, since it was impossible to grow a soul, the creators had to summon a ready-made one and put it into the body. Now the protagonist could easily destroy even dragons, but only after the ability transfer experiment was successfully completed. But except the doll didn't need to worry. She wasn't human, so she wouldn't feel any pain. The lady's soul possessed spiritual power, so she was not afraid of shock, and the body was just as strong. Wait, did these people mean to say that Madame would become a lab rat? The girl had no right to refuse, not even the possibility. Really? The creators hadn't given her powers yet, she was already strong enough, there were even dragons. And yet, these people weren't lying, it was a good body, it held up. But now the mastermind had ordered it killed sooner. They were green milksops, that's why she didn't want to be reborn. She ordered the dragon to destroy them all, and the order was carried out immediately. It had been a few days now, my lady sat in the ruins of the ruined tower. Breaking things had felt good, but what was to be done now? There were no options. There was an option to go anywhere, but nowhere. The girl hated even the thought of living among humans, and it was unlikely that they would accept a doll that didn't age and didn't get hurt. The main character wanted to return to the spirit world, but it was impossible in this body. You could break her as much as you wanted, but death could not be achieved. That was the doll's fate. And the people who made it were bastards. The mistress was not human. Someone asked the doll, was it her handiwork? Except my lady didn't understand who it was? The man replied that the ruler of the demon kingdom, the demon king Cardell. Oh, his grandfather's name was Chester? That was his great-grandfather's name. But how did Miss know him? Mademoiselle replied that he bragged a lot about his grandchildren in the spirit world. The girl remembered him well. It was a strange man to call himself an old man, though he was still a young man. Who was the protagonist? What did this king think he was? A resident of the spirit world who had been called by force. That would be a long explanation. But my lady was the subject of the study. Cardell reported that there was something strange around Miss. This was also because of the research. It was just the lady's abilities. The doll looked strong. The main character was so strong that she couldn't even die. Did the girl want to? Madame wanted it, but this body was too strong. The demon king had a son, and Mr. wanted Miss to be his butler, but my lady wasn't so eager. Did Madame know that demons were born with one of three powers? Absorption, seduction, and destruction. The son of the protagonist just wielded destruction. Among the previous demon kings, none had such power. I wonder if the young man was just bragging about his child right now. Well, pretty much what you'd expect from a blood relative of Chester's. His Highness said that when this child became the demon king, he would have enough power to give the doll death. Really? Did that mean my lady could return to the spirit world? And of course it was true. If Miss would be his son's butler until he got the throne. But Mademoiselle had been in the spirit world too long, so she didn't know much about documents. And my lady didn't know exactly what the butlers were doing. The demon king replied that the protagonist didn't need to worry. She would have an assistant for the paperwork. The doll just needed to protect her son and maintain discipline in the castle. In that case, the girl won't have to deal with the paperwork. Does that mean you can beat the servants as much as you like under stress? The girl asked me to take care of her. The son's name was Julian. It was a beautiful name. The game had paid off. 
Well, Julian the butler was all welcome in the demonic castle. The man asked what race the new employee was. She's a doll. Except a doll isn't a race. But the girl was just a doll. Okay, mister will just put her down as a doll. What was the protagonist's name? Except Mademoiselle said she didn't have one. What? Actually, it's been a long time since the lady forgot her human name. All right, then. It's time to go see Mr. Julian. Sir told what to talk about. The awakening in the presence of the young master is forbidden. Since the next stage had not occurred for two hundred years, he had never been able to become an adult. Awakening? Didn't Miss didn't know about it? All demons go through the awakening three times. The first awakening took place in infancy, so becoming a child. The second awakening led to adulthood. And the third awakening improved physical abilities. Usually, these all stages happened in a hundred years. But with strong demons, it could take longer. At this moment, the doll began to smile. It was just Mistress thinking about the fact that he would actually be able to kill her in that case. Mistress said that there was nothing to smile about in that case, but actually there was. Mister said, since the girl would be the personal butler, she needed to memorize the names of the head servant and the head maid, brother and sister, Leon and Leah. It was necessary to control these two well. The man at this moment didn't understand why the lady had such an awkward expression on her face. Madam could address him as young master. Before the second awakening, his mental age was five years old, so one had to be careful. Would mistress need to babysit him? Doll didn't need to worry. He had a babysitter. Madam should have just stayed close by, the little boy asked. Who was that in front of him? Mister was answered. That it was his new butler. The missus just stood there, but had to bow to the young gentleman. The madam bowed and told the young gentleman to take care of her. At this point, the man said that he had a lot of work to do and had to excuse himself. Yeah, so sudden. Now what? The lady had once dealt with a baby, so she understood a little, enough to keep the baby from crying. Milady saw that there was a leaf in the child's hair and tried to pick it up. But at that moment, the boy bit her. Was it even a demon or a dog? The boy told his new butler not to dare touch him. The girl could not understand a little of what Julian was saying, for his mouth was busy. Now Madame asked to speak again. She could understand. The little boy repeated that he had told the doll not to touch him. Mademoiselle said that she did not touch him, but merely held him by his clothes. And Mr. replied that the protagonist had touched his hair, and ordered him to be released at once. But, except that the young gentleman bit her before she touched her. But now the lady let him go, and the young master fell to the ground. The boy said, that it could have been done more gently. Ah, children were very difficult after all. Mistress did as the child asked, and he still wasn't satisfied. What was my lady doing in the first place? The Dovoretsky answered that she had put the boy up as he had asked, and then I touched his cheeks, and they were very soft. But the baby said not to be touched. He was very angry and started destroying everything, and Miss fell to the ground. Huh, this was starting to get annoying. The doll stood up very quickly. But the Demon King's heir didn't understand why this girl wasn't dead yet? The main character replied that she was just being a puppet. So she was being told how to calm an angry hurt child. Mademoiselle hugged him and called him a good boy. But wait, if he was a demon, wouldn't it be better to call him bad? So I told Yulian that he was a very bad boy. But then he started screaming and saying that he was not bad. Well, in that case, could their pretty young master calm down? The gardener would cry. But, Mr. replied, the gardener never cried. He will hide for that in a corner where no one can see. That's what all the adults did. The child could tear the lady's head off if she kept touching his face. But the boy's cheeks wanted to be touched. It was worth it. But the doll had a bad memory. That's why it forgot. But Mr. ripped its head off. How could it forget? It was the shock of seeing the head rolling on the ground. The young master was very intelligent. At this moment, a maid ran out and asked, Who was that? How could someone dare to raise their head in front of a child? What? The future demon king replied that it was his butler. The woman replied that she was the baby's babysitter, but this was the first time she had heard of it. Who sent her there? Was she going to kill Julian? The nanny's position was high enough to give advance notice of the butler's appointment. We'd have to get along with her. The woman called for security, but that was a mistake. The girl said she was told to discipline the castle. Did it concern them? Or did it? After that, Mistress used her power. Then a man with glasses came in and asked what was going on in there in the first place. The butler had to stop, and the guards had to stop. Milady replied that they were the first to start. It was just a girl trying to bring discipline. 
they were the knights. The butler managed the people who worked inside the castle. The nanny asked if it was really the new butler. Yes, that's right. As of today, it was Julian's butler. Somehow, I had to take care of her. The main character said they had some pretty weak knights. But it was a bit the opposite. It was just that the doll was incredibly strong. Enough to destroy a small country in Middle Earth. Miss replied that strength and weakness were always relative. Mr. asked very much not to bother with these monsters of hers. Knights were a very valuable resource. Well, actually, it was kind of unfair. The man replied that she needed to notify everyone about the new butler as soon as possible, so something like this wouldn't happen again. At this point, he excused himself. The nanny woke up and apologized to the butler. Well, she had no problem forgiving her. And then the young master asked if the mistress was a necromancer? Miss replied that these weirdos were not corpses. Baby even touched them. It was very cold, because it was a Takabi light. Ah, cute. So mistress unknowingly wanted to touch it. But the nanny stopped her and said they had to go back to the castle. It was time for an afternoon nap. But then the little boy ordered the doll to be released. It was necessary to let go of the lady's hand. The nanny listened to him, and the next moment Miss was touching the boy's cheeks. The future demon king asked what she was doing. I mean, Julian had ordered her hand to be released. But what was the butler doing fondling him? Well, the mister was just being nice. And she answered to let the young gentleman know that both her hands were in place. The nurse was telling the doll to get her hands off soon, soon. But why? And they asked Julian to calm down. Well, the next moment my lady's hands flew off. This kid was very temperamental. But Miss just picked up her hand and put it back in place. Except she put it in crooked and asked Mr. to cut it off again. A week later. From that day on, Madame was always by Julian's side. Mademoiselle even managed to reduce the frequency of aggression. From five times a day to one or two. Miss asked, Didn't she say you shouldn't get angry while eating? At least the young master knew. How many times has this wall been repaired? Of course the little guy didn't care about that. And so the protagonist asked what name the girl had. But my lady replied that she didn't have one. The child replied that if the butler continued to lie to him, he would kill him. Yes, Madame begged me to kill her, and replied that no one had ever given her a name. So the child had to stop being angry and open her mouth to eat. What? He didn't even give Henry a name? Milady didn't understand. Who was he to give her a name? What about her father? But Madame replied that the current demon king was not her parent. Mademoiselle had no mom or dad? That's right, she had them once, a long, long time ago, and then they sold their little girl as a sacrifice. In that case, Julian asked, could he have given the butler a name himself? Well, it was just that without a name, it was awkward to call her. Madame replied that she had high hopes for the young master. Mister said the main character's eyes looked like Peridot, so could the girl be called Perry? Or was it Peridot? It was a gemstone, light green, very similar to the eyes of the protagonist. But my lady couldn't see herself in the mirror. The boy ordered her to follow him. The child himself took her hand and wiggled it. Except he didn't like being touched. It had to stomp after him sooner than later. It was obvious that the young lord had grabbed it himself and got nervous himself. They came to Julian's room. He found the very same bracelet with this peridot drop. So he said to go to the mirror and look. They were the same. He interrupted dinner to bring them here and say that? Wavy silver hair, smooth porcelain skin, green eyes that glinted in the light. So similar, in fact, that it was almost as if the wizards had been inspired by Peridot when they created them. They were trying to make a strong doll, so why go to all that trouble to make it look like that? The eyes were really like a gemstone. That's it, the main character said. Yeah, yeah, the kid was very observant. Mister said to keep the bracelet but the butler said she didn't want it. The young gentleman started yelling that it was burned, and if it was given, it should be taken. The girl thanked the young gentleman, and the boy said that the lady could have given it to someone else if she didn't like the jewelry so much. That was not true, but was it necessary to give it back to the boy? No, there was no need to remove it. Madame said to put it in words, because cleaning up the consequences of his aggression was quite a hassle. The young man asked if my lady would obey if Mr. would just talk. Of course she would. But in that case, why did the girl disobey when Julian told her not to touch him? It was because the boy was too cute. But it was just that everyone around them said that the main character was scary. But that just couldn't be. It was the first time Perry had seen such a cute child. And what was good about it? My lady replied that Mr. was so small that he wanted to be protected 
and always be there for her. So what? Everyone dies sooner or later anyway, except Miss won't die. Whatever the young master does to her, she won't die. In that case, Perry will always be around. Of course, except everything changes when the kid becomes the demon king. And if it was a lie, if it was a lie, the boy would just kill her. That's what she needed to remember. Did he himself give his mistress a way to die? If the doll disappears after he becomes king, will Julian come to kill her? The young master simply remained silent. Did the boy wet himself, or did he poop? Of course not. Did my lady take him for a child? But he was a child. The lady asked what the nanny was doing there. She reported that the young master was still sleeping. Also, breakfast with the demon king is ready. The protagonist went into the boy's chambers and started to wake him up. And for more effect, she even touched him. It did help. Honestly, the little guy was like a dog. Or a puppy because he was still a baby. The QCLA took the baby in her arms and just put her back in the bed. So, is Mr. Wake up? Yes, except he asked me to answer him one question. Was Mistress a fool? No. She's Perry. The main character gave her that name. Of course, the boy remembered that. Thank God he didn't have a memory problem. At that moment, the nanny brought water. The butler replied that they didn't need to drink. But actually, it was water for washing. That makes sense. So my lady immediately started washing him. The little one began to scream that he hated Perry. The lady was sure she had washed him well, but the baby kept screaming. This little thing could have fainted from the high pressure. So she told Julian to raise his voice no more than three times a day. The protagonist didn't understand. What kind of conditions were these? Perhaps my lady was just worried. The nanny announced that it was time for breakfast, and it was time to get ready quickly. The young gentleman began to undo the buttons of his nightie, but at this rate, the little one will be late. So the mistress decided to help him. At that moment, he started yelling about not being touched and ripped off the hands of the main character. Mademoiselle told the young gentleman to pass his awakening more quickly so he wouldn't have to do such a thing, but it was not to be spoken of. Mr. asked if the girl would touch him if there was an awakening. Of course, at that time then he would handle everything himself. What? That's when the nanny started crying. What happened? Who would have thought this day would come? The woman was simply delighted. This was the seventh nanny for the young master to open his heart to someone. Thank goodness they had such a butler. At this point, Julian said he wasn't pulling anything off and ordered him to step away from Perry. You see, Mr. didn't even like it when someone touched his butler. The kid just didn't like it when demons touched him first, and then someone else. Except the lady wasn't a demon. What? Was it a person? No, of course not. It's a doll. The boy started using his power again and asked, so can he kill the mistress? No, he couldn't. The lady asked him to just trust her and to stop ruining his clothes. Julian hadn't rejected the protagonist's touch lately, but he kept attacking when he had the chance. And every time the girl didn't die, he said it was strange. But she was a puppet, after all. In the meantime, the mistress was braiding the future demon king. At this point, the babysitter came in and said that it was originally her responsibility. But the lady replied that it was no big deal and as long as she was doing it. Everyone admired the young master. He was simply dazzling. But he ordered them to be silent and not to talk nonsense. The nanny said he could breathe a sigh of relief with the butler's appearance and took her hands in hers. The missus replied that there was no problem with that. And his lordship ordered my lady's hands to be released. Perry took the child in her arms and began to carry him. The boy started to make some noises. Was he uncomfortable? Was he begging to be let go? Then Julian remembered how the doll had let go of him last time, and it had been quite painful. So Mr. said to make sure it didn't happen again, he had to be held tight. But, thought about it, it was certainly embarrassing. And then the nurse pointed out that you couldn't carry the young gentleman like that. He had to be carried in a hug. The woman grabbed the elf at that moment and showed him exactly how. Milady repeated after her. It looked ridiculous, but yes, she did. I had one hand free, but I had to hold it with both. It was very uncomfortable, but it couldn't be helped. A doll couldn't walk around with a young master like that in front of his friends. Friends? Julian has friends? The girl asked, were his friends still not corpses? No, of course not. He had friends. True, the boy didn't like them. The missus asked, why in that case were they friends? And then the young gentleman asked, and really why? Milady wrote a list of criteria for a true friend and asked if the future demon king liked them? No. Was it fun to spend time with them? Also, no. Did the kids help each other? Uh, no. 
In that case, they weren't friends. The young gentleman replied that he was the one who helped them, so they started calling him a friend. The doll then replied that it was called a helpful idiot. The woman asked how idiot. How could the butler speak such vulgar words to the air? Then the boy asked, What did it mean? Mademoiselle replied that he was a fool who gave everything to others but received nothing in return. But Mr. replied that he was not a fool at all. The nanny replied that, of course. Julian was very smart. Nanny had never seen a demon smarter than him. Honestly, she lied as well as she breathed. Madame turned to the woman and told her that if she lied, she would grow a horn. Huh? She already had one. In fact, she wasn't lying. The young gentleman was eating with his hands, and then he was told by the nanny that it was Mouveton, and you couldn't do that. The butler thought it didn't make any difference. The boy was still very nice. Perry put something in the mister's mouth and he got mad. The lady put broccoli in his mouth? The girl said it had a great sense of flavor. The young gentleman asked if Miss wanted to die. Julian threw the vegetable away and said he wouldn't eat broccoli. My lady asked if the heir wanted to be an idiot. What? Mademoiselle asked again, and added that the boy's health and mind would deteriorate greatly if he refused to eat everything. Not true, Miss was lying. How were health and stupidity connected? The lady replied that the brain also feels bad when its owner feels bad, and that thought was even supported by the babysitter. Yeah, it's true. Perry said there was nothing more to be done. The young gentleman threw the broccoli on the floor and took the path of stupidity. And what will they do when the protagonist becomes an idiot? At which point, Mr. ordered a run to bring broccoli, quickly. But a little bit, just a little bit. The boy ate and almost cried. It was very unpalatable. My lady said it could be considered medicine, a medicine for a clear mind. Mr. ate it all. Was that all of it? Madame congratulated the child and said that today he became smart. Just today? What about tomorrow? Tomorrow, too, if the baby eats everything instead of selectively. But he was already smart. No, not so long ago, Julian had called demons friends who just weren't. But it's better now. If the young master eats right, he'll be the smartest. Well, in that case, the little one will eat tomorrow, too. It was an excellent choice. At this point, Madame stroked the boy's head which of course made him angry, and he ordered him not to touch it. At that moment, the main character ran out of the dining room and said he had to go and write one letter. Mademoiselle sat watching this and thought that she should ask Henry to get a painter. After all, it was necessary to capture how sweet the child was. His lordship was writing something, and the lady was thinking of the fact that they had never learned letters, and yet could read them with ease. For some reason, communication came easily, as did reading and writing. When the girl was human, there was no concept of letters yet. Perhaps there was some kind of magic on the doll's body. Well, actually, it's even easier to live like this. If you summarize everything the future Demon King wrote, it would be something like, I'm going to kill you. And then the little one asked Perry if she knew what it was called when the arms and legs were separate from the body. Madame replied that they were severed limbs. Yes, that was exactly the concept. Ripping off limbs. My lady didn't know what he did that for but the child's vocabulary was very good. Julian wrote it all down and gave the butler the paper and asked him if he'd made a mistake. And then Madame and the nanny began to read what it said. The child described cutting off and throwing the lady's fingers to the monsters. Oh my. The woman tried to rip the paper out and was telling the young gentleman that this was not allowed. Except the protagonist still wouldn't give up the piece of paper and the nanny told Mr. that she couldn't let him use words like that. Milady replied that it was fine and she would send it to the lefu. The woman began to say that Mr. Lefou was all the more inappropriate. You don't write such letters to friends. And then the future demon king said that this man was not his friend at all. The butler asked who he was talking about. His lordship replied that it was the one who had treated him like a fool. So that's it. A fake friend he had no interest in spending time with, and who didn't give the boy any credit. And then Miss pointed out the error to the young gentleman. It didn't write, rip out the head, but rip out the head. And also, the content of the letter was too monotonous, intimidate better more colorful and detailed. And then the little boy asked how to do it. Mademoiselle explained that since Julian had written that he would tear out the limbs, it could be added that he would then tear out the man's tongue. And then the nanny began to shout to the butler Perry, and to tell her that you can't do that. She's supposed to stop the young master, not tell him. The boy started writing the letter again, and the protagonist helped him at times. She said that if the future demon king used idioms too literally, they wouldn't be effective. It was time to be imaginative. 
Mr. wrote again and asked if it was good this time. The doll replied that the text was shorter but brighter in content, so it would do. And after that, the nanny watched as her ward actually sent the letter. The woman turned to Perry and said that young Mr. Leff was the Duke's son. It was necessary to stop Julian. Then the lady replied that one cannot avoid a fight if it is called for. The nanny replied that no one had asked for it. No, it was the future demon king who provoked the conflict. What if this person kills the protagonist? The kid didn't even pass the awakening. At these words, Mr. got nervous, and Red Mana began to accumulate around him. The butler asked, Has this Mr. Leff awakened yet? The woman replied that it was best not to talk about it at the moment. But she had started it. Julian replied that this person had fully awakened a hundred years ago. He was now an adult. So he is stronger than the future Demon King? The boy didn't like these words, and replied that he was stronger, and in general, he was the strongest. That's fine. The nanny replied that it wouldn't end that easily. So the butler said we should just kill him. What? Dahl explained that the woman was worried that the Duke's son would kill their lord, right? That was true, but Perry didn't seem to have a good grasp of the demon world. The woman said their master was the son of the demon king. Did the girl know why no one called him prince? No, she didn't. Unlike the human world, the position of demon king is not hereditary. If at some point a stronger demon comes along and kills the current king, he will take the throne. Therefore, the young master who is yet to awaken, he has become the target of many high-ranking demons. The fact, the fact that the baby hadn't awakened for such a long time meant that there was a really great power brewing within him, and they wanted to get rid of him while he was weak. Naturally, the demon king protected the young lord, and even assigned such a strong butler to him, but now the duke might try to attack. But there was still time to catch up with the letter, and... Madame replied that she understood. But they wouldn't catch up with the letter. She would just always be by Julian's side now. But, after all, Mademoiselle was always there. Mistress said that only the weak closed their eyes when they were taken for fools. But the young master is strong, so he can be beaten. In the meantime, the protagonist will deal with all the surprises. That is, of course, if the mister will allow it. The little guy will, won't he? In fact, Julian's defense was originally the work of a doll, but he doesn't like being touched by other demons, so the five-year-old is forced to bathe, eat, and sleep alone. The protagonist that didn't hesitate to admit how strong Perry was even stopped taking his usual guards with him. It might be hard for him to bear the fact that someone was protecting him, so my lady specifically asked permission for the sake of the child, which is strong and weak at the same time. So Julian replied, he was very strong and could tear even a leaf apart, but he would let the butler help him so he wouldn't look foolish. The nanny was very happy about this and said that in that case, she would tell the demon king and ask for the guards back. No, the young lord would not allow that to happen. Only Mademoiselle could be with him. And anyway, he wasn't weak enough to be aided by guards. The demon king said he decided to check the letter his son had written because it had been a long time since he had seen one. Who would have thought it would be threatening? His vocabulary was well enriched. His highness's aide heard the butler helping him. The master replied that he could not even think that the doll could know so much. So he ordered everything to be sent as it was. Mr. with glasses said that this might have given the duke an excuse to act. The governor replied that a little fight of the children might help him get stronger. His lordship was going to say, What country of humans is moderately dangerous? The kingdom of Soden, they're said to have developed skills against demons. They have strong troops. And the borders were in contact with the demon world. Good. It's time to order a war with them. But the troops won't move in without a reason. In that case, we should make sure that this kingdom started the war first. Since they were good at dealing with them, they might have a demon-killing poison. It had to be gotten, and all trails would lead to the kingdom of Soden. It's enough to spread it to the duke's lands. We need to wipe out about a third of the population. The aide agreed and said he would send someone to do the task. He then excused himself. At this point, Mr. with glasses said that if the duke could successfully conquer the kingdom, it would further untie his hands. Another highness replied that in such a case, none of them should win. A man could have done a lot more. Anything to protect his son. The babysitter told me about the game Twist and Turn, then about Chase and Hide and Seek. These are Julian's favorite games of demon friends. The woman said she was careful to write everything down in case the young gentleman had someone to play with. The lady asked, in that case, is this the nanny's wish list? What kind of wish list? 
Mrs. replied that she was just madly wondering what the look on the face of a child having fun would be. Anyway, the nanny can't catch up with him, so she asked the butler to do it for her. Well, that's great. Milady turned to the young gentleman and began to do the first item on the babysitter's wish list, called Twirl Twirl. She picked the child up in her arms and began to twirl. Except the boy asked me to stop or he'd just throw up. And the woman asked what Perry was doing, twisting and turning. What did Miss did wrong? Madame replied that no one did that. It wasn't like the butler was mixing a cocktail. What kind of cocktail? Pick up the baby and shake it up and down. That sounds about right. Above and beyond. This involves picking up the baby and throwing it up and then catching it. Milady had done it before when she woke Julian. It was the second item on the list. Well, the butler did so, but the woman asked him to stop. It was too high. The young gentleman was not a ball to throw like that. Only the protagonist said that by her standards, it was not too strong. In fact, the nurse said that if she were the young master, she would have burst into tears. So the missus suggested we play catch-up. If the young gentleman agreed, he would get a chocolate chip cookie. After saying that, Julian thought Perry was driving. They started, and the main character started running away. And then right away, the girl caught him. But the nanny said it was wrong. She needs to adjust to the young master's speed, and she can't start catching him right away either. Okay, she understood, and said she had to try again. But only the boy replied that he didn't want that. It was boring. And the chief heroine answered that the games were very difficult for the children. At this point, the baby replied that it was just the doll that didn't know how to do anything. Well, the nurse suggested one last game of hide-and-seek. Mr. replied that he didn't want to play that. Something weird again. No. Mrs. will explain everything in advance. It'll be fun. The woman said to close their eyes and count to fifty. The manor was quite large, so they could limit themselves to the garden. Well, now they were picking someone to count on rock. Scissors. Paper. Well, the young master drives, and they hide. They need to be found. The child began to count, and the mistress thought about the fact that there weren't many places to hide in the garden. Well, the little one finished counting and found the babysitter almost immediately. The woman pretended to be surprised that she had been found so early and asked how Mr. had done it. She had hidden herself so well, hadn't she? All that remained was to find Perry, and Nanny decided to help. She began calling the butler and rhetorically asking where my lady had hidden herself. The child found the main character hiding in the bushes. She saw that the babysitter had also already been found. Mrs. scolded the doll a lot when she woke up. She also brought a lot of books on parenting and stuff. She said she needed to learn more about demons. The protagonist was sitting next to Julian, and he asked what it was. Mademoiselle replied that his nanny had brought it all. What, is Perry being punished? Seems like it, Madame replied, that you don't need to pay attention to the books and should just go to bed. The baby said he couldn't sleep. Wow. Did that mean Miss could sing him a lullaby? Did she know? Well, the butler only knew the lyrics, but it wasn't a problem to come up with a melody. Miss had already started to sing, but the future demon king said to wait and said he already wanted to sleep. After a while, the mistress heard Julian's steady breathing. The Tokeby light was flying around and catching insects. A light breeze blew through the open window. For the first time in a long time, the castle had a peaceful atmosphere. So my lady decided to read the books on parenting that the nanny had given her. As the lady was reading, the main character spoke to her. Wasn't the child still awake? He was, but he woke up. But it was still night, so it was too early to wake up. But it was only that the young gentleman reported that he no longer wanted to sleep. My lady said she could read him a book. Mr. looked at her and informed her that this book looked delicious and asked to read another. The Princess and Knight Adventure That Begins Every Night. The title was intriguing enough. Does the princess know how to handle a sword? Once upon a time, a beautiful princess. One day a prince came to her. It was a story about a beautiful princess who was bullied. And a knight. Who loved her. Madame thought it was just a fairy tale. It was only after ten pages that she began to realize that there was something wrong with the book. Late at night, the knight entered the room where the princess was sleeping, when the knight's lips touched the princess's forehead, and then the princess merged with the prince and them. Oops, the adventure turned out to be for adults. Mademoiselle put the book down and told the child to go to sleep. But why so suddenly? He wanted to hear the continuation of the story, but my lady replied that this book was not for children which greatly offended Julian, who said he wasn't a child. The baby, he cried a lot during the day. Well, actually, the nanny was crying too. 
Miss replied that she would read the book to him when the baby was taller than she was. The protagonist replied that he would only become taller after awakening. Well, in that case, he needs to awaken. In the meantime, it's time for a nap. Perry caught the babysitter with a book, and she asked what it was. God, the woman asked. Had she read it? It was a very sensual novel, especially the description part. But in that case, for what purpose did the missus give this incredible book to the butler? She replied that if the lady wanted to know demons, it was good to know such things too. Especially, it's a best-selling novel set in a demonic world. The woman showed me two other novels and said they were by the same author and were very good. That's when Julian came up to them and said that this book was read to him yesterday by Perry. What? A girl read it to him? Also, the main character added that the doll said she wasn't for kids, started reading, and suddenly stopped. And then the child said that he wondered what kind of adventures they have there every night. The woman replied that one must sleep every night, and informed the mister that there had been no adventures during the night. And the butler ordered the books to be taken away, and said that it was time for the young gentleman to get up. He asked to be given some more time, but the protagonist had already tossed him up to wake him up. Is the baby awake? The boy clung to the doll and began to moo. He seemed used to this awakening and was no longer annoyed. Mr. asked my lady what he should do to become an adult. Miss didn't know. But how could she not know, for the girl was already an adult? Well, actually, as a human, she died almost as a child. In the spirit world, age didn't count, and she only lived as a doll for a few months. So she answered the young master that she was not yet an adult. She was only two months old. In that case, Miss is younger than Julian. Indeed she was. But then why was Mademoiselle an adult? Did the child want one too? It's just that the main character said that that book was for adults only, except that the future Demon King hadn't grown up, but he also wanted to be an adult. He would hardly be able to tell if he woke up and realized what book the butler hadn't read to him. So Mademoiselle informed him that she would not read this book to the boy, even when he became an adult. But why? The lady replied that his lordship would be very embarrassed. Awkward? What's that? It's the same as embarrassing. Well, in that case, he was uncomfortable at the moment. But why? It was because all of the future Demon King's friends had already grown up. They were shy of him, so they didn't come to play anymore. Madame thought of the fact that it was about that Duke's son Ralph, or whatever his name was. So answered the young gentleman that there was no need to be ashamed of being a child. They were just fake friends. But how so? Can friends not be real? Of course, people like that have disappeared in times of need. Like now, for example. In that case, Julian had no friends? Is he a loser? I don't think so. The boy even wrote a challenge letter recently. But that wouldn't make any friends. Therefore, the main character needed to become a little kinder. The child then replied that he was very kind. My lady replied that good demons didn't just kill anyone. Was he bad? Is that why the young master had no friends? That's right. But why? Lef had friends. In that case, the man had a good side. Julian asked, what was his good side then? The future demon king was incredibly cute. Well, at least from Perry's point of view. Sometimes not, but often enough, Mr. would snap at the butler. But what's the big deal? The young master was very cute, and that demon would send her back to the spirit world. That's what she liked about the protagonist, too. But it was better to keep quiet about it. His lordship asked the nanny where the protagonist was. She had been summoned by Henry the butler. Today the woman would stay with the baby and entertain him. So there was no need to worry. But you shouldn't. And yet, the boy turned around and said he wouldn't say it twice. As Perry came along, he became more in line with his age, but originally, Mr. was like this. The protagonist was silent most of the time. He exploded with rage if anyone touched him. Now, his lordship asked the nurse if he was nice. Of course, the woman answered in the affirmative and said that to top it all, he was also very strong. Would that be the case, even if the baby tore her head off? The young man noted that Perry was strange. The first time they'd met, they hadn't even talked, and he'd ripped her head off, screaming, venting his anger, ripping her arms and legs out. But she'd acted perfectly calm, as if it were a minor annoyance. Was it all because she was a doll? So Julian turned to the woman and asked her to tell him everything that was known about his butler. What? The nanny replied that she couldn't have known much about the butler. The future demon king said he was aware that she had reported to Henry. His lordship used his power and ordered him to speak. Madame asked for her to be released to begin with and Mr. asked if she didn't need her arms and legs to speak. 
The woman said she'd tell you everything right away. Perry was a doll made by human magicians. Mrs. didn't know what the reason was, but the girl was different. And she came here, making some sort of pact with the demon king. After that, the young master let her go. The nanny asked if maybe the mister suspected her of something. No, but then why? The child answered that he did not know when she would leave him. Milady occasionally made a strange expression on her face, so blank, as if she were ready to disappear at any moment. The pact with Cardell. If the protagonist would help her instead, would Miss stay with him? But Mr. didn't know what Miss wanted. This lady said Julian was nice. It was better to behave as Mademoiselle wanted. You have to be nice. The young gentleman will be nice or kind. If Madame said to be kinder, that would be a good place to start. That's why he asked the nanny not to tell about the incident. Because he's a kind child. The protagonist was walking and didn't understand why the busybody had to be called in? They could have asked the babysitter. It's not like Miss is a mongrel that's being trained. In the meantime, my lady knocked at the young master's chambers and announced that she would be entering. The child was very glad to see her. What? Why is his lordship so friendly? Wow, the little guy was even smiling. It was an unusual sight. The girl got goosebumps from what she saw. He was just M cute. The future demon king was always cute, and when he smiled, he looked like an angel, but he seemed to be sick with something. The boy did not usually behave like this, so Mademoiselle took him in her arms and carried him somewhere. She apologized in advance. A girl ran into Henry's house and told him they were in trouble. What had happened? My lady said the young master was ill, but he seemed to be all right. Madame asked for a closer look. The child was smiling, which shocked everyone. It can't be. We should have called his father. The protagonist turned to Perry and asked, Wasn't he cute? Miss asked the young gentleman, Why so sudden? At that moment, someone broke a window and jumped into Henry's butler's office. What the hell was even going on? The king said he went there because his son was smiling. But can someone explain what was going on? The girl was torturing someone because he wasn't going to say anything. Well, you didn't have to explain. The assassins who infiltrated the castle were still very young, so the governor gave one of them poison. That way, they'd never know who was behind it. The king ordered the survivors to be put in the dungeon, the dead to be disposed of. The protagonist asked, could it be trusted servants? Henry the butler reported that the castle servants were as strong as the knights, but certainly no match for the parries. Well, all right then, as long as they're strong. At that moment, Julian tugged at the butler's skirt and asked him for a hug. But Mrs. Dirty, after all, she was holding one of these, she might have poison on her. The child replied that he wouldn't die from such a small thing, so he needed a hug. The boy was scared? Scared, but only because the doll could die. His Highness said that raising a son somehow didn't work out. It must be mother's sadness. Shouldn't we have a male butler? The little boy got mad and said that Perry wasn't his mom. She was just his... Oh my God. Everyone started staring at them. And Mademoiselle thought to herself not to be stared at like that. She didn't do anything. Right. The butler is now Juliana? Madame replied that she belonged to herself. Henry said that even though he wasn't a mistress, he definitely belonged to his lordship. How about that? The father replied that it was his too, but except that the boy didn't want it. And to be honest, such words were very painful for men to hear. So Mr. with the glasses said to make the lady agree that she belonged to the young gentleman. It was not her duty. Why should she? Who is she to say such a thing? A hundred years old but Julian is still a child. How do you say such a thing to a man you're about to die by? His majesty told his son that his butler already belonged to him, so stop sulking. Hey, why were these people deciding who the madam belonged to? Well, the kid agreed with that. And then the ruler saw that he was indeed smiling. Well, in that case, a commemorative date should be established. That was a good enough idea. The girl turned to the main character and thought about what she needed to say that she didn't belong to him, so that in the future, but his lordship said the protagonist was his and told her not to die for anything. I should say, but Mademoiselle just agreed with Mr. So be it. Milady followed Henry and asked where they were going. They were on their way to question the killers the lady had neutralized earlier. Was that also the work of a puppet? Yes, because they were trying to kill the young master. They've come for Julian, no matter how you look at it, because his butler is not widely known. So these people tried to kill the lady so as not to leave any witnesses. The surprised look on the face of one of them was very amusing. Even Mistress didn't know how she was going to die, much less them. Mademoiselle was informed that it would be better to cover her nose. 
but it was all right. Rusty iron and blood. The smell of rotting flesh beat at her nostrils. Seemingly because of the doll's body, Mademoiselle didn't seem to care about such things. Are these people still alive? The lady was informed that a few had not even been touched. The rest were not dead, but they could hardly be called alive. At least they looked closer to dead. Here they are. It turns out they came for the young gentleman, but not who they were working for. Did Madame know how to torture? No. She had no idea, but she's going to try. Well, Miss asked Henry if he believed in the existence of a soul, whether it was a man or a demon, a bird or a tree. All living things had a soul. Originally, souls were naturally separated from the body after death. The same females touched tokebi lights, which the girl summoned and materialized. These were also souls. Now the question. What happens to the beings who die with a sense of resentment? All have begun to ask for salvation, even though these are the souls of those who died at their very hands. They didn't look like this when they were alive. They can't die today, and Madame will make them all pay for attacking the future demon king. His lordship asked where did the protagonist go. Mademoiselle replied that to the dungeon, and in the meantime, Julian woke up early. The child did not understand why she needed to go to the dungeon? The girl replied that it was to punish the bad guys. The nanny asked, did the butler really go to kill someone? Of course not. Strange. Then where did the smell of blood come from so strong? That strong? Well, it wasn't pleasant. Milady asked if the protagonist could wash up on her own and go to breakfast. In the meantime, she would change and join her. No. Mister didn't want it that way, so he'll wait for Perry. Well, it's a deal. If the young master was really hungry, he could eat first. Well, knowing the character of the future demon king, he was probably waiting for his favorite. Stadi, lately, they hadn't been apart even for an hour. It had been a long time since the girl had had a moment of solitude. Is the lady so used to the kid? You can't get too close to a boy. Miss will go to the spirit world when he grows up. Someone touched the butler and said that they had finally met. Who was it? Well, the man knew her perfectly well and pulled her to him. May I address her by her first name? No. Who was in front of her? At that moment, a kind of dome appeared around them. And Mademoiselle said it was a demon palace. You can't use power so carelessly. Wow! The man was shocked that Mistress had dismissed her so easily. And the girl thought about how her puppy would get very hungry if she didn't come right away. Mister asked if the main character felt absolutely nothing. Like a fast heartbeat or something. Huh? Maybe she liked girls? Madame came in and said if it was her, she could please in any way she wanted. Wait, who were those people anyway? Milady didn't understand. Maybe these people could be knocked out? Though they could have been aristocrats, then trouble would start. The girl turned to Perry and said she liked her. Could she call the mistress by her first name? No, she couldn't. Well, Mademoiselle decided to deal with them first, and then she would think later. At that moment, Henry came running in and turned to the butler. What was she doing? Madame asked, who are these demons? Mister asked to let them go first, and then they would talk. Butler got a confession all three were saying the same thing, and these people were the chief servant and maid mentioned earlier, Leon and Leia. The main character reported seeing them for the first time. Were they even working? Mr. Glasses said their main job was to deal with intruders, so they weren't working. What were these demons doing when the assassins got into the castle? The man said he was doing a good job, but some demonic beast had stolen everyone before him. Henry's butler said it was far more important what they were doing at the moment. Young people said Butler Perry was pretty damn beautiful. It was tiresome to eat people every day. So they were going to try a special meal. The demonic Duke of the Mirror? Did the protagonist know him? Well, if it was Leff, the young lord once wrote a threatening letter. Leff is the only son of the Mirror Duke. Then this Duke is targeting the young master? He has no time for that now, because the people of his territories were dying. I wonder if it all turned out this way because of that letter. Weird. More like the Duke was trying to scare the main character because he couldn't kill. So cowardly. Did the Miss speak of a Leff? Yeah. Didn't have the guts to challenge him directly, so he did such ratty things? Hired assassins to stab Julian in the back? How strong were these two? Capable of defeating the Duke of Leff? How long would they still be standing there? Well, it was unclear if they would win or not, but these people were incredibly strong. These two will be in charge of guarding the young master from now on. Did Henry's butler authorize this? He doesn't care, but as long as the lady is around, they're not necessary. The protagonist asked what are these ones doing there? 
Perry replied that they would walk with them. Mister didn't want that. But here it didn't matter. It had to be done that way. Leia said they'd be invisible. Just follow him. That's right. Those two will be hiding in his lordship's shadow. In that case, Julian said they should disappear from his sight now. I wonder why Mister is reacting so keenly. Mademoiselle asked if the protagonist was very hungry. He answered in the negative. The nanny asked what he was lying for. The woman could clearly hear the young gentleman's stomach rumbling. The young man replied that it was not true. Of course, the lady understood that his lordship was hungry. But how about writing one letter before eating? A letter? The protagonist reported that those assassins appeared to have been sent by Duke Leff. The future demon king didn't want to miss a hit from him? In that case, one must strike first. The boy said he wrote it all down. Oh well, she'll look at it. Leon asked, was this the kind of thing that could be sent? Everyone was trying so hard to hide that the young gentleman had been attacked. Well, you didn't have to worry about that. I mean, it's not like it was written. Something bad happened, so Julian missed his old friend? It's obvious, you can guess everything from that sentence. Well, it'd be weird if you didn't. That's what it's written for. Demons went through three awakenings. All demon children must go through the first awakening to release demonic energy. After the second awakening, magic can be used, and the third makes the body complete. On average, it takes aristocrats a hundred years to go through the three stages. But the stronger the demon, the faster the demonic energy is generated, causing the awakening to take longer. Here, in the demon world where status was determined by power, nothing is more dangerous than this. The reason why Julian is still fine is most likely because Cardell's abilities are great, but the nanny asked if it would be okay. The woman didn't think the master would allow such a thing. He wouldn't, of course, so it had to be done in secret. You can't do that, the missus said. She'll go with them then, too. And the protagonist told Leon to send this letter to Lef right now. How long would it take to send a shadow? A threatening letter from the heirs is just a pretext. But why would Miss ask a servant to do this? Madame turned to Nanny and told her to stay there. After they leave, she must report everything to Henry. Cardell could try to protect Julian all he wanted. The Duke would still wait for the right moment. And they will prevent it. The Duke must be made to understand that even without the Demon King's protection, an attack on his son would end in his death. The protagonist asked the young master to promise her something. No need to use magical energy unless Perry asked for it. Even if the boy seems on the verge of death? Yes. The young man asked what if he died. The young master had a butler. He trusted her, didn't he? Yes, of course he did. Moving was much faster now, for they now had Leon and Leia with them. They had already arrived. Mr. asked if they even knew how long he had been waiting for them. Mademoiselle held out a box to the young man. What was it? It was a gift. For Leon? No, of course not. It was for Lef. He should just hold it. Leia must hide in the young master's shadow for now. In the meantime, it was time to go. Mr. asked who had come to see them. It was the son of the Demon King Cardell, young Master Julian. And while he's being escorted to Mr. Leff, the young man said he had already been warned that a friend was coming. I wonder what he was here for. And anyway, he was still a child. Who's next to him, the nanny? Which one is it now? Afterwards, Mr. asked if the protagonist killed everyone in the same way, uncontrollably. Maybe he should have stopped taking his anger out on others. Madame turned to the young gentleman and asked if he remembered what she had asked earlier. Afterward, the main character said that it wasn't the babysitter, but Julian's butler. What? The butler of a kid who didn't even make it through the second awakening? Was this man just dragging around this burden? The demon king cared a lot about his son, so the boy wrote that something bad had happened. Mademoiselle said the young man was attacked. The customer could not be found. So his lordship came to that place in person to ask for help from an old friend. Wow, old friend seven who said that? A child? Left didn't think that was possible after the Demon King's heir threatened to rip off his limbs. By the way, who was next to them? The man self-identified himself as the head servant. What? Head servant? These people came without any guards at all? Then the Leon replied that he was strong enough, and that made Mr. Laugh enough. The lady noted that the young man seemed to be slightly offended by the previous letter, so a gift had been prepared for him. Ah ha 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 ha, what? Was he being offered to just accept the gift and forget the whole thing? Milady said it was a perishable item, so would like to have the box checked out sooner rather than later. It was annoying, but the Duke's son said that if he didn't like it, they would have to prepare something better for his person. 
The missus replied that she would certainly like it. The man opened the package, but what was in it? The girl informed him that it was part of the gifts that the leaf had sent to them the other day. Alas, more than half were used. It is unlikely that the young man had counted on such a quantity, but the lady asked to accept the gift. His lordship threw out the box and ordered the knights to seize these men. At this moment, Mademoiselle turned to Leon and ordered him to block the door. The butler turned to the young gentleman and said he needed something to drink. That was it. Now he could kill as much as he wanted. Madame stood by the shelf of bottles and asked Henry what it was. The man replied that it was a potion, a condensate of demonic energy and absorption power, used by higher demons to gather power. The butler asked not to look at him like that. Well, my lady had no choice but to agree. The duke's son ordered the little bastard to be killed, but it turned out the other way around, and the room was filled with corpses. Leia asked, how did that happen? The doll replied that everything was self-inflicted, although stop, the left wasn't even injured. The young lord turned to Perry and informed him that he would be taking his old friend with him. The young men were walking in the direction of the estate, and the protagonist was saying that it was a pity that the duke himself was not there. Leon didn't understand. Wasn't that better? Mademoiselle replied that in that case the Julian would have awakened. The headmaid said that they would be annihilated before they could even blink. But actually, they had a doll with them, so such an outcome was unlikely. At this moment, the Duke's son was somehow mooing strangely. What happened to him? Leah said his lordship didn't hit the man. She's the one who put a bit of pressure on him. Henry asked, Are they all crazy? The lady replied in the negative. But in that case, what the hell were they even thinking? Was the young master okay? Sure, the kid was just a little dirty, and the butler of the manor said that it was urgent to call a doctor. Except the protagonist replied that he wasn't wounded. But then why was there blood on his face? The heir to the throne said he killed them all himself. What? They threw the duke's son after Henry and said it was their prey. And Mademoiselle said that, on top of everything else, the potion came in handy. What? When did the girl steal it in the first place? Miss said she was just borrowing it for the young master. What the hell? Did the madam even know what this potion was? If there would be side effects of demonic power, maybe left with only absorption power. The lady was aware of it, but the Yulian's demonic energy was very strong, so there wouldn't be any problems. That was true, but it didn't change the fact that such a thing was dangerous for a child. The young man asked Perry if he was dangerous. Henry answered him that he was fine and not dangerous. Really? In that case, there was no problem, but the butler of the manor reported that you couldn't just take everything and drink it. What would the kid do if that potion was dangerous? What do you mean, all in a row? Perry gave him the potion, and if the main character gave it to him, then everything will be perfectly fine. And why exactly the butler? The kid reported using the suppression stone on the left, so he had to be put in the dungeon. What were they doing at the Duke's estate anyway? Henry said that's something an assistant should look into. In the meantime, you need to understand everything to prepare for the consequences. The lady replied that it was nothing special, just the power of all the demons that were in the castle at the time, absorbed by the young lord. It's like that, but that's not what you'd call simple. Mademoiselle said that the children were playing. What was the big deal? Mr. replied that it just can't be considered play. Oh well, there was no time for that now. It was time to get down to adult business. The young gentleman started coughing and coughing up blood. Perry asked to look at it. At that moment, the butler of the manor used his power and ordered him to be grabbed. The next moment, they were near some spring, and Mr. said to carry Julian there. They put the child there. But what was it? What was happening? It was the lake of awakening. So, yeah, that meant stage two had begun. It's been a week since the main character's awakening began. The babysitter said Perry's butler had nothing to worry about. All demons went through this. She was in the lake, too. Only blue. Demons with the power of absorption entered the blue lake with the power of seduction in the pink lake. Demons with the power of destruction in the black lake. The woman remembered it very clearly. The memories of that period she had only good. Surely the same thing was happening in the black lake. The protagonist didn't think she was wrong about the heir to the throne. The baby had just entered the Lake of Awakening, like all demons. But for some reason, the madam was thinking more and more about how many mistakes she had made towards the baby. While Miss was thinking about it, the nanny said, she should not worry and eat. 
meat pie, turkey meat, broccoli ragu. And then my lady remembered how Julian himself had fed her broccoli. And now the lady definitely began to realize that the protagonist coming out of the lake would never be a child again. So she turned to the woman and asked if the young master would forget her. Mrs. replied that of course not. After waking up, memories are retained. Everyone has been through it. And how tall will the young man be? Well, if you look at his father, tall. If you measure it by the age of adults, he'll be 23 or 24 years old. At that age, people were already considered adults, and at some point, they'd get mustaches. Julian with a lush mustache. It's hard to even imagine. Then suddenly, Madame was reminded of the day the child had first smiled brightly at her. If the protagonist had known this would happen, she would have called the painter anyway, no matter what Henry said. I should have drawn those little fidgeting fingers, because the memories will fade one day. The nanny asked the butler if she really didn't want to eat at all. She certainly didn't, for the doll's food was a kind of nasty stuff. Leon came in and said hello to the butler. Today, it's his turn. The three of them were filling in for each other. He brought a book, too, and the mistress already had a whole library there. Did Leah bring this? She always chose books like this. Oh, had the man known what the headmaid said about him when she came to? By the way, did the missus hear that he was banned from the underground prison? It's just that Mr. was pulling energy out of left from time to time, and Henry realized the incredible fuss about it. Mademoiselle said he was a man, so what was he eating men's energy for? Already he was just calling Henry by his first name. The young man didn't understand what that had to do with it? Food is food. Butler, didn't she want to share a little energy? The girl didn't like those words, and she could have already attacked. But the head servant replied that it was just a joke. In fact, the doll was only kind to the young master. Milady just kept quiet. She was up to her old tricks again. The protagonist wasn't dying, so we could relax about that. Everyone went through awakening. It's just that the future Demon King's power is greater, so the process took a little longer. There's no need to be so depressed about it. Madame wasn't depressed. It was just anxiety. What if something goes wrong? What if the gentleman couldn't get out of the lake? What if he regretted his time with Perry? Or notice her faults? Will her friend no longer embrace her? Perhaps the reason for all this was that my lady was worried about the child, who bared her fangs every time waking was mentioned. This bitterness was caused by a love that mistress realized too late. Quietly, the black lake was close at hand. Everyone was told to keep their spears at the ready. The demon king's son was in the lake of awakening at that moment. They only have one chance to get rid of him. We need to search everything. No mistakes allowed. What's that? Why is there fire in the air? Who's out there? The protagonist came out to the crowd and introduced herself. What were these demons going to do to her master? Huh, the noble young master of the demon king's castle was protected by just one servant. It was ridiculous. She wasn't even emitting demonic energy. Everyone has been ordered to attack that girl. Madame asked, who were these people? They wanted to kill her, but they didn't know about her power. Miss grabbed the commander by the throat and asked again what they wanted to do to the young master. Well, almost all the knights were killed. Perry held up the ring and said to give it to her master. The survivor asked who the girl was. She was a butler. Vedel Castle, the lord was informed that a knight had returned from the Lake of Awakening. A knight? What, they couldn't deal with a defenseless child? And an unarmed girl killed everyone but him? It was indeed true. The mister pulled out the ring that that lady had given him. It was the commander of the knights. The mister asked, who did this to them anyway? The guy replied that it was the butler. At least that's what she said herself. The man thought about the fact that there was only Henry in the demon king's castle. But he used magic and was constantly with the king. Since the rookie knight had been spared and sent back, it was a warning. If that butler was with Julian in the Duke's castle, where the bloody massacre took place quite recently, Cardell, that damn old man. The man's assistant asked if it was worth sending the knights out again. No, need information on this butler. Age, where she came from, need to know everything about the enemy. Better to lure a strong demon to their side. And the knight who came back must tell all. What he knew, it, was a girl. Her hair was white. Or was it golden? You couldn't see well in the dark, so you couldn't tell for sure. Her eyes were light green. That's right, Perry. Her name was Perry. What else did the fighter know? There were blue lights hovering around the protagonist, which were changing their appearance. Also, Mr. felt no demonic energy at all. So it turns out that Butler wasn't a demon. 
A mere human couldn't be stronger than a knight commander. Could it have been a dragon? No, you didn't. Demons and dragons have had a bad enough relationship since time immemorial. But if Cardell, who loves his son dearly, bends over and gets a dragon on his side? That bastard was crazy. We need to send out meeting invitations to all the demon dukes. And like the master said before, find out everything about that butler. The man's aide asked what he was going to do. Didn't demons and dragons sign an agreement not to invade each other's territory? If he ended up in their territory, it might help overthrow the demon king. The lady informed Leon that there had been an attack last night. They were trying to get rid of the young master, so the missus killed them all, but, yes, the protagonist was the one they wanted to kill. He can't use his powers in the lake. It seems those demons were in a hurry. After all, it was because of the doll that the awakening of the demon king's heir began. Maybe it was. There was an unspoken rule that you couldn't touch him while he was in the lake of awakening. Good thing the main character killed everyone. Okay, that was all understood. In the meantime, Madam asked me to tell Nanny and Lay not to come. But why? Because if a demon comes in there, it would die immediately. Wait, was Mademoiselle really going to kill everyone? Not her, but her lights. Every time the head servant was surprised to see who Madame was asterisk the black mage asterisk, the main character is a doll. I don't know about black magic, but she was created by human mages. Hmm, if the lady was created by humans, aesthetically speaking, what? The man didn't get it. Did he need to be hit once to get his brains back into place? Mr. replied that it was just a simple, harmless joke. And that's when something started happening in the lake. The awakening was over, still the same black hair absorbing the sunlight, eyes the color of sunset, horns that grew to the size of a mistress's palm, a height one head taller than her. It's all Julian. At this point, Mr. walked over to Perry and just hugged her. My lady congratulated him on his awakening. The protagonist asked Leon what they were doing there. The doll hit him and said that's what they were doing. The head servant asked the butler to take care of him at least a little. His lordship asked why it was the lady who had to take care of him. And who were those kneeling beside them? They're trespassers. My lady has set the fire Tokabi to watch them. They're not the first. Ha 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 ha. So that's where the smell of blood was so strong. Crush them? The young man did just that. The next demon king, Julian, has completed his awakening. That's what these intruders must hand over to their master. In the meantime, the head servant should clean it up. He should do it, but the man didn't like it. The butler had more power than he did. His lordship looked at him with just a murderous look, and Leon understood and went to clean up the mess himself. Mademoiselle asked why Julian did that. What was she talking about? The man was right. The doll was much stronger than him, the protagonist replied that he hated it when Perry touched other guys, because Perry is only his. Well, more specifically, it's his personal butler, Madame replied, that the gentleman should not be so obsessed. It's not an obsession. Milady thought about the fact that the guy hadn't changed much if you looked that closely. So she touched him on the cheek and told him that you can't do that when the main character has a queen. The queen? Yes, the young man has completed his second awakening, Soon we'll have to go on a journey to find his mate. But the protagonist replied that he didn't need such a thing. It's only now that Mr. could meet the love of his life. The master took the girl's hand and said he liked Perry, and she was the only one he wanted. It was different from love. Julian liked the main character, the fact that she just stayed by his side. She was the girl who dared to get close to him when no one else could, the one who broke through the solid wall that no one else would go through. Does it matter if it's sympathy or addiction? What really matters? Can a young man love a doll? But, the girl said no. The master turned to his father and asked what is love? Wow, his son came back a philosopher? Well, love is the feeling a demon has for his partner. There's a kind of parental love. Then what was it? Was it different from sympathy? Of course. Henry asked the young gentleman and asked, He liked the butler, didn't he? What kind of feeling was that? The protagonist replied that he wanted my lady to always be with him, because she was his. The demon king turned to his son and told him that he needed to learn the difference between possession and attachment. In that case, what is possession? Cardell said that Julian had grown on the outside, but was still the same kid on the inside. Did he know why Perry worked there in the first place? Isn't that weird? She had nothing to do with the demons, but she worked for them, Mr. asked. What was so strange about that? This girl wanted to die, 
This doll is strong. I don't care if they cut off her head or lock her other body parts in a room. Miss stood outside the door and didn't understand what they had been talking about for so long. The Demon King said to his son, his gaze on his father completely unchanged. No need to change the subject. Hadn't the man told him enough? The doll that the heir was possessed by came to their home to die at the hands of Julian. She wished for the destruction of her body by the guy, because he possessed the most destructive power in the history of demons. In fact, it was his majesty who suggested it to the girl. What will his son say to this? Will he give freedom to Mademoiselle through death? Perry will disappear, and that just can't happen. It can't happen. That's why he won't kill her. The master asked if the doll had done something to hurt his son so badly. The answer was no. But in that case, what was the future demon king going to do? The guy asked, what did anyone care? The protagonist was only his anyway. After that, the young man left. The demon king asked that if it wasn't possession, what was it? One look was enough to understand. It was the power of destruction. Now, will Madame be able to return to the spirit world? 